on their horses over there. A lot of boys. They're not representing a Eureka spirit. Anyway. We got an 11 year old girl who's going to come up here and give us a poem. Isabella. You'll be hearing from Rita Bentley, Prospectors and Miners Association. And John Dell from the Mount, uh, Mountain Capitals Association. <laughs> Les Adams, representing the timber industry. <laughs> Murray Williton, who's also from the Barmer National Park. Yay! And finally, John Roof, commonly known as Roofy. Everyone seems to know him. Okay, what I'm going to do now is call on our first speaker, Melinda Bath. Thank you. Hello, everyone. You look fantastic. There is nothing more awesome than to see mountain cattlemen, uh, bush users of all varieties, standing on the steps of Parliament and showing your support for our bush use, our continued love of the bush, and the fact that we want to have bush use in public hands. Now today... Today, I was very honoured on behalf of Bugu and with Rita Bentley and David Bentley in the Legislative Council to present a petition with 4,431 signatures and climbing, it's still open, folks, and I know many of you have signed the petition, to really be a force to Daniel Andrews to make sure he fully understands that there needs to be respect of our bush and there needs to be access of our bush, and we need to be able to ensure that conservation and bush use can coexist. It is not yeah. one or the other. They yeah. Now you all look beautiful and I would love to stay and talk all day but we have 20 people to speak so I'll leave you in the capable hands of the next speaker. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks Mel. I'm Louise Staley and it is great to see you here again. I want to do a special call out to Bill Schultz who was there at the very first meeting at Mount Cole mid last year and I want to thank all the people particularly from Ripon who came out and supported us at rally after rally after rally. And those of you who have been at those rallies where I've spoken before will know that I have said in the past that I stand with you. I still stand with you. And I want to thank you for everything you are doing to keep the forests open in Ripon. Uh, I will continue to fight your fight for you. Uh, this is where I live, it's where a lot of you live. I know what this bush means to you. Uh, and I just want to thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, this is how we tell the government, this is what matters to us. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Tim Quilty. Tim Quilty is a Liberal Democrat member, also a member of the Upper House. I will be brief. Unlike some of my colleagues in this place, I don't love the sound of my own voice. Um, I'm Tim from Wodonga. My colleague David and I, Liberal Democrats, we've always believed, our party believes that public land, we should have public access to public land. It belongs to the public. There, there are two types of environmentalists, people like us who love the bush, yep. spend our free time in the bush, and then the people from the city, from the inner city, who call themselves environmentalists, who never leave the inner city and want to lock everybody out. These people aren't real environmentalists, they're bullies. Yeah. And some of them are members of this parliament, and some of them are members of Parks Victoria. Yeah. The campaign to lock us out of our public land in the regions is typical for the Andrews Labor government, governing for Melbourne only. Anyone in the regions doesn't count, not for funding and not for anything else. Mm. You don't see them locking up public lands in the city 
They're not locking up the MCG. They're not locking up the Treasury Gardens where the public servants go for lunch. It's only land in the bush. Yeah. The city bureaucrats make up the rules for the country. Dark green ideologists pushing these lockouts to exclude all people. They hide what they're up against behind different things. Sometimes it's, it's hiding behind reconciliation, but that's the myth of a virgin bush untouched by human hands is an insult to Aboriginal people. The real agenda is for no people to be allowed in any publicly owned bushland ever. Um, the people they've stacked VIAC, they want state parks to be national parks, they want no camping, no logging, no, no prospecting, they lock the climbers out of the Grampians. Um, once they do, once they move in, they're powerless. As I said in my first speech in this place, maybe it's time for a Rexit. Maybe it's time for our region to leave and become a new state. Leave the city to ourselves. Yeah! Veterans support ya! He blew up the mic. Where's <laughs> Andrew? Where's Daddy Boy? Get him, Daddy Boy! Can you stop? Please. Great to see so many people here. Okay. The Greens are pulled out. Where did you work? back online can you all hear yeah. beautiful okay we've now got Jeff Borman Jeff Thanks, Phil. Thanks for having me. what a turnout I was um, I was hoping for this and um, it's turned out really well well our party is pretty uh, pretty clear about what we do shooters fishers and farmers we're about obviously shooting fishing farming I see a uh, hound over there. But we're also about prospectors. We're also about people collecting wood. We're also about people doing their uh, trail riding, four-wheel driving, everything. Public land is for everyone. It shouldn't be locked up. And there are more Bay than enough national parks. And in fact, there should be less. And I think we need to show the government that we are not happy. And this is a really good way of doing it. So keep up the good work. I'd like now to invite Peter Welsh. Thank you. Woo! Thank you very much, Bill. Good afternoon, everyone. And look, thank you for all of you that have travelled to make the effort and come down. It is so important to be able to send a really powerful message to particularly the Labor Party, who are still in the House in there. So thank you for making that particular effort. They locked the key in message tight. that we want to leave you with is public be. land is for public use. It's not... Woo! Public land is for public use. We had a stand out at the 4x4 Expo a couple of weekends ago, and I was amazed at the number of city people that came through and actually signed the petition to make sure public land is for public use. And, and, and so what I would urge anyone here that is from Melbourne, or anyone that knows someone that is from Melbourne that loves using the public land, please go along to your Labor Party Member of Parliament if you live in a Labor electorate, or go to your upper house member if you're in a conservative seat and voice your concerns to those Labor MPs of what Daniel Andrews is going to do by locking up another 77,000 hectares of land into a national park. Please, go and voice your concerns to the Labor Party. We're very welcome to talk to us. 
but you are talking to the converted. It's about changing their point of view uh, to save that land from being locked up. So thank you for coming, and we will be there to support you to make sure public land is for public use. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Is Isabella here? Where are you, Isabella? Come on, lovey. Okay, and this is Darcy as well, her little sister. Hello, Darcy. <laughs> Hello. You right, love? There we go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Isabella, and here I have my little sister, Darcy. I am a sixth generation bush horse rider. I'm here today to protect my right to continue here riding my pony in the Bahama forest like all my family before me have done for generations. I am 11 years old and I have many years ahead of me to enjoy the bush and to learn how to protect it and manage it for generations to come. I am always very respectful of the bush and I treat it like my own backyard. I don't want to be playing and spending all my time watching video games and watching movies. The bush and the bush is my other classroom where I learn firsthand about na nature. I am the next generation that will be custodians of the way and the secrets hold by the land. But if I don't know how to do those things by being locked out, I will not have the knowledge to fix things when they go wrong. My parents and grandparents won't be around forever, so I need to learn how to manage things by myself. When things, when there's no one left to ask, the Barma Forest is a big place and there is plenty of room for everyone to share. I just dropped it long. My hand was open. And enjoy. The wonders and the magic it has to offer. I love the bush and the People I meet in it, crossing it, closing it down will take that, one the one pleasure my friends and I just share. One day my generation will, will be governing this state and country. And I hope we don't have laws made by things, thin generation, stopping us from doing what's right. Please, Mr. Andrews, don't lock us out. Keep the Barma bush open for everyone. Thank you. Now you can understand why we want the bush open. It's for kids like this. It's our future generation. That's how important it is that we must keep our bush open. Not just for us now, but for youngsters like that. So they can enjoy the bush as well. I'm going to now call on Rita Bentley from the Prospectors and Miners Association. And she's also an admin member of the Bush Users Group United. Thank you, Bill. Just put our hands together for Bill Schultz because he has been the driver of this. Um, we, we were advised that we should contact the, or Peter Walsh said we should nag the La Labor Party because they're the people who are in government. Well, we did invite Daniel Andrews and we got an acknowledgement of the invitation and we did invite Lily D'Ambrosio who um, unfortunately didn't even deign to respond. Again! She's 
in her ivory tower and own, own Do I be there long? Now, many of you know that I've been battling um, this issue for some 30 plus years. And quite honestly, it wasn't getting any easier, but I'm heartened by the turnout today. I would have liked to have seen a few more people, but I'm very pleased. So can you give yourself a clap for turning up? Thank you. <laughs> now, VIAC has treated the prospectors very badly yet again. Um, we lose at least another 55,000 hectares in the Central West investigation if they get their way. Um, this is in addition to the 13,500 hectares that we lost when the Jar Jar Rung management plans were put together in central Victoria. And gold is where you find it. They can't say you can go somewhere else because it's, these are all gold fields that they're locking us out of. There might be a little bit of state forest left somewhere, but whether it's got any gold or not, we probably don't know. By the way, the Jar Jar Rung are the same people who want to reintroduce dingoes to the central Victorian gold fields. Lock out the prospectors, bring in the dingoes. That's gonna help. And they've decided that pros That's stupid. prospecting is an extractive industry. Now, most of you, um, well, all we prospectors know there's nothing extractive about what we do. We extract rubbish. Yeah, a lot of it. But, but the amount of gold that we find is minuscule. So calling it as extractive is absolutely um, claptrap. We do actually actively care for the bush. We have our clean up the parks days um, and our reward is to be excluded. Uh, I'll tell you what, there won't be too many more clean up the parks days if this goes ahead. And what really is wrong is that there's no science behind what VIAC are doing and they haven't even given an excuse for excluding prospecting, they've just done it. And the same with the Jar Jar Rung people. Um, I will add that when Lily D'Ambrosio was Resources Minister, she did come out with us looking for gold. Um, she didn't find any, maybe that was our mistake. <laughs> <laughs> she sold it to China. But this isn't only about prospecting. I know that there's been some concern that Bug has been led by the prospectors, that's just a fact of life. But we need the engagement of all of you and I'm pleased to see the variety of groups that have come along today. Everyone here today is being affected by the activities in Green Group and VIAC, plus the weakness and unwillingness of the Andrews government to stand up to them. We are facing the proposed 525,000 hectare Great Forest National Park, the Emerald Link the Marine Parks, a park in the Strathbogies and a hell of a lot more. Not to mention the Aboriginal groups are now calling for ownership of all public land then we, the people, lease it back from them and pay them rent. Victorians don't want this, can't afford it. Victoria was built on gold. Our mineral emblem was. is gold. Right Most there. of our grand buildings like this one were built on the money behind gold. We are amazingly blessed to have this resource. Why then is it so, is it considered to be evil to want to look for it? We all need to work together and tell the Andrews government we, we will not accept any more lockouts without a bloody good reason. Yes! Thank you, Rita. We've got now Michael O'Brien. Michael O'Brien is the leader of the opposition and also the Liberal member for Malden. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Thanks to all of you. Thanks for coming out and standing up for your re recreation, for your pastime, for your livelihoods. Thanks for coming out and standing up for common sense. Thanks for coming out and standing up for public access to public land. Yay! Because a lot of politicians in that place don't hear common sense, but I see it out here today. I see people who love their country, who love their estate, love their environment. People who love camping, bushwalking, fishing, prospecting, horse riding, yes. four-wheel driving. Yes. And they don't want to have that taken away from them by this Labor government, do you? No!
Now, the Minister for the Environment and Energy, she's uh, got her hands full at the moment. She's uh, made a mess of recycling. She's made a mess of energy prices. She's made a mess of solar on rooftops. And now she's in charge of deciding if you get to keep accessing public land. Whoa. I have to tell you, I don't have confidence. I don't have confidence in Lily. I don't have confidence in Dan. But I have common sense. I have a lot of confidence in the common sense of Victorians. Hey! So, and I know I've had my colleague uh, Louise Staley, member for Ripon, she's been out here on this issue. Great to hear from Rita Bentley before. My former, my former job as Minister for Resources, one of the best days I had in the job was going out with the prospectors and miners and Rita and going out there looking for gold. Because this is, as Rita said, this is a state built on gold. Our state emblem is gold. And to think that we're going to stop people accessing public land for recreation is just madness. Yes. Just madness. We won't, we won't cop it. You won't cop it. Can I say congratulations on finding such a strong voice today. We are with you. The Liberals and Nationals are with you. Make sure your voice is heard and don't let them take away your right for public access to public land. Thank you, Michael. I'd like to present now John Dell. John is a Mountain Cantlemen's Association. Thanks, Bill. I'll be short and sweet, but I'm going to speak from the heart, not from anything written. I'm here today for two reasons, and both of them you can call them selfish. I'm here today to defend my right to be an Australian. Yes. One of the things we do is when we're having a joke and having a beer, you say, bloody beauty, it's the weekend, I'm going bush. bush. Yes. What do you say? Yes. Now, what are you going to do when they lock us out? Oh, I'm going to McDonald's. Uh. No, not going to happen. I represent the Mountain Cattlemen's Association today. I'm also associated with the Barmer Forest Cattlemen's Association. What we do is we used to manage the bush. We used to look it up, look after it. Locking it up is a waste of time. It's like going to your 16 year old kid that's got a shitty, messy bedroom saying, close the door, it'll go away. It won't go away. If you go up into the high country, you'll see the mess that's been made up there and it's absolutely atrocious. No one can go in there. You can't bushwalk, you can't ride, you can't do anything up there. Not only that, once you lock everyone out of everything, you lose knowledge, and knowledge is strength. I come from King Lake, I know a little bit about bushfires. Yeah. So, what's happened up there since the bushfires now has gone from bad to worse, they haven't managed anything up there, and there's a lot of tracks up there that the trail bike riders, the four-wheel drivers, the hunters, they know them, and when a fire comes through, that's the knowledge you need. You need to be able to say to someone, where's a track I can get in behind the fire? And that's what we'll lose. As I say, shutting up the bush is a waste of time. Our fathers and our grandfathers went to war to protect what we take for granted. Don't take it off us. I beg you, don't take it Woo! off us. Now finally, the second reason I'm here, as you saw our little girl here before, I've got grandkids. I want them to be able to see what I've seen. I'm 65 years old. I've seen quite a bit of the bush. I want to see more. But more importantly, I want my grandkids, I want your grandkids, I want everyone's grandkids to be able to see it. We don't own the bush, you don't own the bush, they don't own the bush, we own the bush, it belongs to all of us, and I think it's our right as an Australian to protect it. So, good on you for coming in today. We Woo! Won't, we're not giving up, and we're going to be here forever. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Stoggy, too! Thank you, John. Very interesting what he said about the bushfires. Believe it or not, last week I was at the Four Wheel Drive Expo. I spoke to a few CFA guys, and some of them actually fought in the fires that we just had only a few months ago down the southeastern part of Victoria. A lot of you will know that that was state and national park that was burning. A lot of the CFAs now are starting to refuse to go into national parks because they consider them a death trap, because they aren't looked after. State forest was okay. National parks, they had to bomb, fire bomb them. So 
So this is what we've got to be careful of, of what happens when you lock up a national park. It becomes weed infestated, unfortunately. It also then protects all the wild, um, sorry, all the feral animals that are actually killing our wildlife because yeah. hunting is gone in that area. So turning a state forest into a national park is a no-brainer. You just don't do it. No. Okay, I'm going to call on now Les Adams, who's part of the timber industry. Les? My name's Les Adams. I'm a hardwood logger in the native industry. And I'm bloody proud of it. I work in one of the oldest industries in this land. It is the most regulated industry. It's like working in a fishbowl nowadays. We get looked at from every aspect of it. But the land that we work in is what they want for a national park. A bit funny about that, isn't it? We, we've supposed to have buggered it up. We've been there for Nearly two centuries, they still want it as a national park because it is the greatest forest of all, a multi-use forest. It has got more animals in it than their national park because it's got regrowth. It is just totally the most sensational thing, our multi-use forest. Timber. They talk about renewables. This Morbin here has got a biggest thing on solar panels at the moment. Wind farms. How long does the solar panel last? 20 years and it's buggered. Yeah. It is totally stuffed. So the trees will be cut down in 20, 25 years, will be a third of their states to their next cycle of our timber. What really gets to me is science. Science is supposed to be the be and end all of it. A scientist is supposed to tell the truth. We've got a mob at the moment that's sponsored by the Woodland Society and other environmental groups. I, I met one of them way back in the 80s and he was doing some studies on some possums. I did everything I could to help him in the Talangi State Forest. That bloke could have been one of the best scientists in Australia. But now he works for the Wilderness Society. And this government in here, listen to every bloody thing he says. It is wrong. He talks about lead by the possum. He's been proven wrong on that. The other thing he talks about is fire. And he says that bushfire is caused to be hotter by logging. In 2009, because being a logger, I'll just go back a little bit. Being a logger, you also have to be a first attack firefighter. And we're different. We're not the CFA. We're not... We work with 12 and that, but we're a specialised unit. And we're first attack into any bushfire. In 2009, I got sent as a first attack over to Broadford, where the big fire started. That was probably one of the most horrific days, as everybody knows, and it's probably one of the worst days of my life. We got left for dead, we hit behind a dam, but what I was wanted to say to you was, I watched that fire as it headed towards King Lake. It wasn't burning through logged out forest. It was heading to the King Lake National Park and it became a bloody inferno because it had had no fuel reduction burning done in it. And even this year, 
you go to the parks to fight fires. We were on dozers, excavators. The parks, when you went into a park, if they hadn't taken any of the 2009 dead trees down on beside the roads. So you can't get in there to fight it because they become infernos, even in a fire like we had this year. Anyway, that, that scientist or professor, or whatever he wants to call himself, is David Lindemeyer. And him and his cronies are not scientists. They're environmental activists. And they're all out to get us. Yeah. Good evening. Well, I'm going to cut it off now, or you've had enough of me. But I'm just going to say to you, this government in here and the Wilderness Society and that have started a new extinction list. I'm on the top of it and so are every one of you. Anyone that is employed or enjoys our forest is on their extinction list. So we've all got to stand together like we have today and let them know that we're not going to take it. Thank you, Liz. As you can see, he's a very passionate man. He's been in the logging game now for a long time. Right. He also mentioned that they were the first ones into a fire zone area. You get rid of the loggers and you all got rid of your defence for any bushfire in that region. The loggers are the first ones to go in. They also got all the equipment, bulldozers and everything else to clear the tracks. You'll notice or you remember just only a few months ago with these fires down we had down in Victoria, there was a green group that actually logged up or locked up all the logging equipment during those bushfires. It took them over 10 hours to be able to get those plant in and running to stop that bushfire. That was 10 hours of that fire raging which could have lost lives. This is how stupid it really is for allowing all this sort of thing to happen. So it's vitally important that we also protect the loggers because they are protecting us. Thank you. I'd like to call on now John Dowell. John? Where is he? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm reading me reading this wrong. <laughs> um, Murray Wilton, please. Everybody. I bet you I can tell you what's happening at the moment in terms of VIAC and this newly uh, new idea of a new park. They've obviously met with you guys and they, they say that they consult no, and you don't. guys do your best to put across your opinion and then what they do is they totally ignore you and they bring in the decision wanted because VIAC are a publicly funded government organisation. It's exactly the same thing that happened with the Barmer Forest being turned into the Barmer National Park. Back then, ten years ago, we tried to give the government a lesson in what the word consultation means. Consultation means that you come up to the, go out to the bush, whichever area, and you consult with the people honestly, and you get their opinion and you get the real truth, and then you go back to Melbourne and you put everyone's opinion equally, and then you decide what you do. You don't decide beforehand and then come up and do the consultation. It's dishonest. As a result of what VIAC did to us at the Barma National Park, our heritage is slowly being destroyed, and this new park, it'll happen the same way if they get their way in relation to that. We lost the logging, we lost the cattle grazing, we've lost uh, firewood collection. They're about to try to uh, slaughter all the wild horses in the Barma Forest. Uh, They're about to ban trail riding. Uh, They're about to bring in uh, lower speed limits in boats along the Murray River. Uh, They're about to introduce camping fees in the Barma Forest for the first time. Uh, and that's what we're fighting against and it's based on the dishonest conduct of government agencies. 
they're lying to the general public. I'll give you a couple of examples. Parks Victoria for the last 12 months have been, well, longer than that, but the last 12 months they've really ramped up their campaign to slaughter the Barmer Brumbies. Innocent wild horses that were put there by man. Their campaign is, is that the numbers up there are out of control, when in the last six months, the Chiefs of Parks Victoria have stated on national TV that there are 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800 wild horses out in that park. Are you getting the idea that they've got no idea what they're talking about? Yes! The real facts are that they've done two counts using digital, a digital th uh, infrared camera in a helicopter. The first count they did about two years ago, they counted 143. The second count they did about a year ago, they counted 158. And they, and they haven't released this one because they're too scared to, but they did a count last uh, about four weeks ago. And the total amount of wild horses they counted in the forest was 60. Oh, what a and lot what of they'll crap. do is, they go back to their head office, they use scientists and they use modelling and computers. And what they'll do is, they say, right, oh, now if we see 60 horses in that area, that means that there's 60 horses in all the other areas. It's completely dishonest. So at the moment, we believe there's about 130 there. And they've come up with 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, but they've come up with, say, 600 horses that are pretend horses. The people of Victoria are being lied to. How government agencies can conduct themselves like that astounds me. It should be, and I think it is illegal. The second part of uh, one of the real crackers that they lie about is that they want to get rid of the Brumbies because they do damage to the Moira grasslands. All right, if you call hoof prints on the ground damage, well, okay, I'll agree. That's the sole reason they want to eradicate them. The real truth is, for the last 10 years, they have been environmentally flooding that forest and that forest Moira grasslands has reduced from 13.5% of the size of the forest down to 4%. And it's because of the unseasonal environmental flooding. Their own scientists who they pay to deliver what they want them to say have even admitted that if this environmental flooding continues for the next decade, the Moira grasslands will disappear. They will become extinct. Now, can you people explain to me how, if they're going to be made extinct because of the environmental flooding, why are they removing 130 horses? Because it won't make any difference. They're the lies that the public of Victoria are being told. The corruption, the lies, and I can come up with a few stronger words in relation to the, uh, the conduct of Parks Victoria, DELP, the Minister's Office, the Environment Minister's Office, the murray Darling Basin Plan Authority and a few others is disgraceful. You people, do you realise another reason they have just, uh, the Yorta Yorta people, who I thoroughly respect, have just uh, put out a document a week ago calling for once again the horses, trail riding, camping fees, everything else to be introduced. I found out after a meeting with them last night that they were threatened by Parks Victoria that if they didn't agree to this, the Commonwealth Environment Water Holder would withhold environmental water for the National Park. What the fuck? When, it is, when is it legal for government authorities to threaten other government authorities? It's dishonest no. behaviour. Sorry about that. The best thing that I can say about today is you guys being here and all of the Bush user groups being connected and coming together. So far, all of our individual groups have been fighting our individual fights and they're fobbing us off. Today's a great day because all of a sudden we join into one force and we join together and they're not gonna be able to fob us off as easy. Power in numbers, guys. I just stated earlier that I really, really do respect the Yorta Yorta's uh, heritage in the Barmer National Park. But this document slaughters everyone else's heritage. 
And I just want to say to them that everybody's heritage should be treated equally. Yeah. Yes. We're all Australian. Yep. No one's heritage is more important than anyone else's. Right, oh, last thing I've got to say because I don't want to hold you up. I'm sick of this behaviour of these government departments. And I'm calling on a public inquiry into this mismanagement. Yeah! And general manipulation and lies to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Murray. What he was saying is pretty well true. That's only the Barmer. Later on, it could be, and let's hope that this never happens, but the Wombat National Park, if it ever comes, that's where the next days will be. And all the other national parks. I know for sure that right now, and we had photos of it last week, up in the Bendigo National Park, they're putting gates across the main gazetted roads. Now this our firefighters getting in. Happen right down the line. Parks can't look after what they got, so they find out the easiest way to do it. Let's just lock it up, yeah. and yeah. that's not what we want, right? Yeah. Okay, we have now got John Roof or Roofy. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Well, bit of a hard act to follow, isn't it? Really, a Queenslander. But I'd like to say thank you to all these people who've spoken today because I learnt heaps and I learnt how passionate you are about your own activities in the bush. And it's funny because on the way down here, all I got was people coming up to me saying, good on you, mate. Don't forget to tell them about us. And the first us was a group of guys with short hair, really fit blokes, you know what they were, don't you? They were soldiers. And they were waiting to go on a deployment and they said, you know, when we're overseas, you know what we think about? We think about camping in the bush, getting home to our families, getting some peace and quiet and solitude. And then I went into the bathroom and there's a poster and it says mental health awareness. Well, let me tell you something, the bush You've already heard this, is our heritage. Australia started out as a bunch of tents on the side of a, quite a nice harbour in Sydney, but I'm in Melbourne, so I can't say that. This building behind, 1856, built off, gold. off the back of people who were camped out in the bush. Yeah. We do this because it's our lifestyle. It doesn't matter how we do it. Too many times, I've travelled all over the country, I've been really lucky, it's my job, I love it. But you know what I keep seeing? Gates. Well, there weren't gates before. And then they go, oh no, we didn't shut it down. No, 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 you can still go there. There's the day use area, barrated off with trees. And you can go for a walk. Yeah, well maybe you could if you're a green academic and you spend five days a week sitting on your backside, you know, I want to go for a walk. The rest of us are workers. You know, maybe yeah. your knees aren't so good after 20 years of laying carpet or something. The bush is where we go for our recreation. And the reason we go is because we're Australians. It's our yeah. As a Queenslander, I came down here and I knew the history of this beautiful city and I know how it was built. But I thought, I had a quick look and tried to understand the politics, which, no offence gentlemen, is a little bit confusing. You seem to have a bit of a roulette system going on down here. But I looked at it and I thought, hang on a minute, inner city suburbs greens. Well, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So I kind of expected to see rain tanks and solar panels and wind pumps and maybe using some of these gardens to grow some fruit, but I oh know. Do you know where these people come from? They're academics. This VAC committee up here, Victorian, what is it? Environmental, Environmental Assessment. Tell me. Assessment. 
Yeah, I know it's crap, but... <laughs> they call themselves a council, but they're not one. I looked them up. Five people, probably about my age, which means they went to university for free in the 70s, not like the kids of today who get saddled with massive bills. And here they are picking up their 900 grand a year to sit up there and make decisions about all that vast bushland out there. Absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense at all. And I know, because I had a look, that what they wrote at the beginning of the year was word for word what they came out with at the end of the year after they'd done all their consultation. And it embarrasses me as a professional four-wheel driver to note that they consulted with four-wheel drivers. They consulted with a mob called Victorian four-wheel drive, which is supposedly a peak body, which has 4,200 4, or something members. I met at least five of them today who are ready to leave because that is less than 1% of the four-wheel drivers. So they didn't really ask anyone. And then we find out that they get a quarter of a million bucks a year to shut their mouth from the government. And then the last three quarters of a million over three years, I read the form print, and then the last thing I saw was that they've actually recommended that all the tracks be gated off and that people be charged to go in, that money can go back to the government. Of course they have, because they'll have the keys and they'll probably collect a fair swag of the money. The bush is not about greed. The bush is about our heritage. It's about our mental health. Yes! It's the place we need for our recreation. It's the last place on earth you can find true solitude. And I'm not talking about a crowded little bullhearted park. I'm talking about the ability to go out there on your trail bike, in your four-wheel drive with your family. Take your dog. Take your dog, of course. Off you go, and you find that solitude. You bring your family together in this digital age. Get them away. Okay? Where everybody's preoccupied, everybody's flat out and busy, it all comes together in the bush. Hands up here, everyone who knows that feeling. Woo! There you go. And we're only a few of the people who know this feeling because we're also the people who have to work for a living. Kind of amazing, isn't it? I wouldn't write a government handout, except they wouldn't get the value out of me. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Now, I think you've done something here that's really quite amazing. By getting out of your jobs, getting here to make this point. You know, I can see Eureka flags everywhere, and Eureka happened here in Victoria. It's the first time we told the government to naff off, in a big way. And here it is, you're starting it again, you Victorians, with your beautiful backyard. All your high country and your wombat and that whole beautiful area that we all access and love. And you're fighting for it. And so am I. And so is the rest of Australia for what it's worth, because we are sick to death of people, inner city people and academics telling us what to do in the bush that we know and love. Yes! It's ridiculous. The is just coming. Like asking a bunch of wine drinkers to pick the next beer. It's stupid. What sort of government, and I'm not political, you know that, I would say with so much respect, that I understand from reading the papers what the Liberal Democrats have been doing. Good on you guys, Tim David, really appreciate it. And I also know what the opposition's promised. Hold them to it. But our problem's always been this. We are the workers. We are the humble people. We are the people who go bush free for our recreation, for our soul's sake. And yet, you know what's going to happen when it's cut off, don't you? Rebellion! Little groups of elite who are handed out the key. Because this is what's happening now all over the country. I see it all the time. You know? You can't go there. Oh, hang on. 
yeah, yeah, you can, you go. You know, you're, uh, what are you doing? You're researching the habits of the hairy nose wombat. Yeah, sure, there you go, off you go. This is our land. We paid for it, generations of us have paid for it with our blood, our sweat and our tears. We paid for it out of our pockets. We're even paying to have them put gates up out of our pockets. This is wrong. They know it's wrong. It's sad. It's really sad. Yeah. Do you know I didn't even know his name until this morning? But I can tell you something. I learned a new term this morning. I went on radio down here with a guy called Neil. It was really good. And it was called virtue signalling. And suddenly it all made sense. Because I've got a kid in university at the moment and I spend a bit of time out there. I'm very proud of him. And do you know what? This is the heartland of these people making these decisions. And there is nothing there that would indicate that. 40% of our power bill, our footprint comes from air conditioning. Do you think they're maybe teaching kids under trees? Do you think maybe the academics are designing buildings with high ceilings and big verandas? No, they're not. This is virtue signalling on their behalf. That's what it is. Look at us, world. We've made some big national parks and we're keeping all those people out. This is crap. VAC! Bullshit! VAC! Unconstitutional! Thank you very much. Good luck. I want to bring my grandkids here one day too. Woo! Okay, you want it? Yes, yeah, sorry, Murray Willerton again from the Barmer Brumby Preservation Group. I, I forgot before. Um, I've got a 28,000 signature petition here with in individual comments basically saying leave the Barmer Brummies alone and, and don't even think about slaughtering them. I'd like to present it to Mr. Borman from the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party who has supported us fantastically uh, over, over the years. Thank you. Thank you. There's been a lot of talk lately about mental health and how it's a great uh, putting a lot of pressure on our medical system. I know right now there's going to be a lot of people in that building who've got mental health right now, I can promise you. <laughs> the point is, these people, and we've spoken to quite a few, they come up to the bush. It is their stress release. They go up there, they enjoy their mates, they sit down, have a few beers, round a fire. They go out either horse riding, motorbike riding, prospecting, you name it, they can do it. The point is now, if this gets closed up, what happens to their mental health? Where do they go? Do they end up going into the hospitals? Do they also end up putting more pressure on our health system? Or do we leave the bush open? At least it's a good medicine and it's a free medicine. Hey! I'm going to call on now Jason Cornish. Jason is going to read up some motions that we've got written that we're going to present to the government. Firstly, thanks again for everyone coming. You're actually representing more than what's here today. As an example, Ruthie had an online survey done, an online petition done. You got 48,000 to sign it, saying that they're against any of these lockups. You've had 30,000 signed from the, the Barmer mob. And there's many more people out there that haven't been able to get here today because they're working. So you guys should all be proud. You're representing everyone. I mean, we've had people Woo! coming from South Australia, Queensland, Woo! everyone. We're here to tell them that we don't want to lock up. So that's great. All right, so we've got seven main demands. These will be presented to the Parliament. So we need you guys to vote on them. So when I say them, I want you to say yes and put your hand up, all right? Number one, I've got to read these out. We demand a parliamentary inquiry into public land management as detailed in our petition. Yes. yes! Number two, we also recommend a moratorium on the creation of new parks and reserves until they can be based on the recommendations of a parliamentary inquiry. Yes! yes. VAC 48,000. 
full of crap. Yes! Sorry, it's not the win. That's not official. <laughs> Number three. Uh, this rally will not accept VAC's recommendations in the Central West Forest investigation that will restrict or ban any commercial or recreational user and their activities in any way, shape, or form. Yes! VAC's full of crap. Yes! yes! Four. That VIAC be disbanded and in a new advisory body be formed that will represent all recreational and commercial stakeholders of public land, including the CFA. Yes! This rally will not accept any more state, national or conservation parks that will restrict or ban people from enjoying their chosen activities. Yes! Come on people, we want to hear you. That Victorian government stops giving full control to Aboriginal organisations, not people. These organisations are commercial organisations, corporations. Now these blokes are getting paid a fortune. Most Aboriginal people don't even know what they're doing in these corporations. Most Aboriginal people, like us, are going to be locked out of these areas. They put a ban and a bloody gate on it. You're not getting in if you're black, white or brindle. To make rules and regulations that restrict or ban other people and their activities. Yes! yes! This rally has no confidence in the Victorian Minister, Lily D'Ambrosio. Yes! yes, sucker! V-yuck! Oh shit! V-yuck! Oh shit! V-yuck! Oh shit! All right. Good day. Thanks again, everyone. You're amazing. Thank you, Jason. Okay, can I have a show of hands, first of all, or we need somebody to second that motion that was put forward? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Many places. Okay. Anyone that speak against? I, I need the doggy. <laughs> right. All for it. Yes. Okay, carried. Right, as you can see that we've also had many parties, uh, parliamentarians, supporting our cause, which is great. Thank you. But this does not stop here. It doesn't stop now. This is only the beginning. We need your support. We need your help now. Right? We've done what we can, but we'll do more. But we need your support. And what we need you to do is go and talk to your local parliamentarians. Tell no, them that you're not happy. Ask them not to vote on this resolution or on, on, on this policies of, of the V8 report. We also want you to go along and get onto local talkback radio. Go and put in letters, submissions, whatever you want to your local newspapers as well. What we need to do is get the Victorian people's voice out there. If we don't, we're going to lose it. It is also our constitutional right as a free state to have free bush. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I'd like to thank you all for coming. It's been great. Give yourselves a pour. You've done a really good really job. Thank you. It's made my task a lot better. Right, it's made my admin staff, they feel like now they've done their part as well and they can see the results and it's fantastic. All the people have been great. We've all got to stick together as what we are. We're Bush Users Groups United. We're all Bush Users. We're all united. We know different. There's no sort of boundaries, right? We are everybody who uses the bush, and that's what it's all about. I'd like to thank you all now for very much for coming, um, and thank our members of parliament who have also helped. They're the ones now that we need to concentrate on. They're the ones now that are going to try and push this through. You notice that there's two parties that have not turned up. What's that telling you? The Greens are Labor. They're not interested. Not interested in Victorian they, they people. Were invited, but they did not turn up. But you'll notice that everyone else did. All the other parties and independents. 
That's how important it is. Go on, Daddy boy! And we will all fight. Right? So, what do we want? Yes. Yes. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Public access! When do we want it? Now! Okay, everyone, thank you very much. Disperse orderly, just wander back down that way. Please be careful if there's any traffic coming through and that, and thank you very much.